What is up everybody? This is Hobbs Horror back with you for your horror cult exploitation film. Today we are reviewing The Aftermath starring Steve Barquette, Sid Haig, and Len Margolis. Let's take a look at your Blu-ray here. This is a Hamilton book purchase. You can go get this one from Hamilton Book. Relatively cheap. I think I paid maybe eight bucks for this one. So let's get right into this film here. So Steve Barquette is also the director and he is also the lead in the film. I know a lot of people have an issue with directors being leads in the film. I don't particularly think this film was a problem, as was uh, in the film that I just reviewed recently, uh, Hell Ride. The director was the lead in that film, and I did not have an issue with that. That might be the case for other films that you may be watching. What you have here is you have a spaceship that is en route. And they're trying to come back home, and they're on like a voyage. And they're trying to come back to Earth. And in the process of coming back to Earth, there has been some nuclear explosions and some attacks on the world, leaving virtually nothing, and everything has been destroyed. So basically, this is post apocalyptic. And. While they're traveling, there's an explosion on the ship. I believe what happens is the ship overheats. So that causes them to crash into the ocean. And at that point, when they get out of the ocean, they are coming across kind of an island that's kind of deserted all out to itself. On that island, it is inhabited by people, uh, very, very few people that are left. And the ones that are left are either deformed or being ran by a leader of what they would call the filth group, Sid Haig, whose name is Cutter, ironically, in this film. Cutter, obviously, is an homage from The Devil's Rejects, House of a Thousand Corpse, Captain Spaulding. So that's probably where they got that film, maybe. I can't confirm that, where they got that name in the film, Cutter. When they call him Cutter, is probably from this movie. He does look a bit like the character. He does wear the vests. Obviously, he's much, much younger. And he's leading the group of the what they call the filthy group. And what they are doing is they are attacking people. They are assassinating very brutally all the men and leaving just women available to them at their every realm and children. So the astronauts come out of the ocean and they've inhabited this land trying to find a place to kind of settle. So they find this mansion. They settle in this mansion and everything starts to go good. The kids and the women escape. So they arrive at the mansion as well with them. And the astronauts then decide to go out and try to find resources. Well, as they try to find resources, they encounter these mutated filth. Uh, creatures and also Sid Haig who's not mutated but he's kind of the leader of the group we'll just call it the, the gang and he has also encaptured some of the women as well and his job basically is to lead the group and sexually assault if he can the women but obviously in this film the good thing is there really was no rape scenes and at that point, it's basically good versus evil here. You have the gang of, of mutants and Sid Haig, Cutter, trying to kill the astronauts who have now taken in the, the ladies that have survived and the children. And it's good versus evil, basically a fight to inhibit what's left of the land and to essentially uh, survive because there's nothing left and they're they're just trying to survive the post-apocalyptic situation so that's what you have with it folks now the budget on this film was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and I know that they they worked on this film for about four years to try to make this correct now my thoughts on the film so this one of the first blu-rays I've ever seen that 
Even if you hit the play button, you get a documentary about the director and the director's wife before the film even starts. I thought that was interesting. Towards the end of the film, you get another follow-up documentary or kind of like a bio to uh, the director and his wife. And a little homage to the Barrymores as well, because I believe they were involved in this film as well. Now, in terms of my thoughts, if I liked the film, I did. Uh, the gore was on point on this one. The gore was very good. Uh, there was a lot of scenes where arms were being cut off, decapitations. But you could tell the effects were all practical. Now, the CGI came along whenever there was explosions and things like that. That's to be anticipated, as this film was out in 1982, but was... In play from about the eight, 79, 78 to 79, and then finally came out in 82 as a release. Um, so you get a little bit of both. You get CGI, and then you get a lot of great practical effects. The practical effects were where they needed to be at during the gore points of the film. So I did love everybody. The characters were fantastic, but to me, Sid Haig stole the show. And it's not just because he's one of my favorite actors of all time. I just liked how he ran the gang and how he acted. Um, very calm, cool, collect, very sinister in this film. And uh, as he should be, that's what made the film. Uh, it's not one of my favorite exploitation films. I'll probably say out of the ones that I reviewed, this is probably the least favorite. Can I recommend it to everybody? If you like post-apocalyptic films... If you like 70s throwbacks, this is definitely for you. Um, check it out. It is worth a watch just for seeing Sid Haig alone. And the acting was great. Uh, the effects were great. For practical effects, the effects were good. The limited budget, they did pretty, pretty good. The space effects were great. So, yeah, I mean, I do recommend it. It's not one of my favorites, so I'm just going to give it probably like a, an average rating. But go check out The Aftermath as well. Worth a watch. And uh, hope you have a great Monday and a good start to your week. This is Hobbs Horror. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.